Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon and this is Whiskey and Wool's Knitter's Life series, a new series that I am doing for 2021. This is episode 18. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. How are you? Um, I, yeah, I hope you're thriving, flourishing, and not languishing. <laughs> Uh, so I am going to talk to you today about where an basically an update on where I am on my projects. I, you know, I am working actually hard on uh, getting projects off the needles and um, I have four, well, I had last episode I had four sweaters. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> It is uh, September, it is a Sunday, it is September 25th, I think. Sounds right? No, 26th. It's September 26th. I, um, I'm i going to skip the whiskey chat today because I am a little short of time for putting, you know, in terms of recording and editing and researching a new whiskey so I'm just gonna skip it this week this will just be about wool um so yeah I want to just update you on my projects and uh, I have one new cast on my plan for the rest of the year so before I get into it let me just tell you this um, my plan for the rest of the year knitting wise is to finish what's on the needles now um, and I had at last episode, I had four sweaters on the needles. I'm down to three because <laughs> I finished one. Um, and after those sweaters are off the needles, I am going to be working on the Stephen West MCAL and Christmas stuff. And once I'm finished with the MCAL and or Christmas things, I'll move on back into doing sweater knitting. Um, not to say that some of the uh, knitting that I'll be doing for Christmas will not be sweaters. It will be, but it'll mostly be some smallish projects that I can move through pretty quickly. I just want to get them done. I don't want them hanging over my head come December. I want to be able to enjoy um, the season and uh, maybe work on with work with some of the um, December kits that I bought the daily you know I guess advent is the right word even though it suggests um, some type of religion and I'm not religious at all uh, so anyway that is my that is where I'm at uh, another quick update that you may be interested in, especially if you're planning to go to Rhinebeck, I will be at Rhinebeck um, in a surprising turn of events. Um, Rhinebeck weekend is also my granddaughter's birthday weekend. She turns one. Her parents, my son and daughter-in-law, have decided to uh, forego a party this year. Um, they're going to do a virtual party and they told me to reconsider visiting them. They live in Texas, so they asked me to uh, consider staying home just because it isn't, um, it, it's unknown. There's so many unknowns with the pandemic and uh, I'll plan a trip to see them later on this fall, like either uh, in November or December and um, yeah, just so, yeah. It's, I'm sad about it, sad not to celebrate her birthday with her, but um, I understand the hesitance on their part, and it will mean that I can go to Rhinebeck now. So I will be at Rhinebeck. So if you will be at Rhinebeck, please let me know down below. Um, I don't know what it's gonna be like in terms of the uh, gatherings and stuff. I, um, I am somewhat hesitant to you know, gather in big groups, but on the other hand, I really, really want to see people. So, um, I will be going to Cake Palooza. I bought my ticket to Cake Palooza for Friday, the Friday before Rhinebeck. Um, and I wish I could go to Wool and Folk, which is the Thursday before Rhinebeck, but I just, I don't, I, do, I cannot take the time off of work to, to do that. Uh, so I'm going to instead just do Friday and Saturday. I'll be at Rhinebeck all day Saturday, um, or most of the day Saturday. 
uh, and doing various meetups with um, folks that are getting together for you know different things so I'm excited to see people um, I'll be masked of course <laughs> as we all should be um, yeah so that's that's it those are my tiny little like life updates um, it has been weather wise like rather a uh, crisp fall like morning so we've had weather in the 50s um, Fahrenheit in the mornings which has been quite nice but it's warm it warms up so it's sort of this weather where <laughs> I wear sweaters and shorts and uh, slippers sometimes um, so let's get into the knitting um, I have a finished object this is the Astral Astralis Astralis pullover by Paula Pereira um, from Making Magazine, whoops, <laughs> Making Magazine number 10. It was the gold issue. Uh, yeah, so I think it came out last fall. Yeah, I think that they do, if I, if I remember right, they do two, um, Making does two issues a year. And I think this was from the fall of 20, 2020. Um, all gold issue so I had made a couple things out of here already um, but yeah I this has been on my list for quite a while I made it out of this beautiful gray yarn from um, John Arvin textiles this is uh, some yarn that I bought it's called Cocktails. I bought it at uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival, EYF, the last one, which was 2019. I don't know if they're ever going to have them again. Um, maybe there'll be some reformation and there'll be some other festival in Edinburgh. That would be great. It's just a fun place to visit. Um, and yeah, I, I really loved my stay there. Um, this I bought four skeins of this and the sweater used... Um, a little over like just a dab of the fourth because I did make it a little bit shorter than my norm um, as per the the way that the pattern was written so I, I pretty much I think mine hits about the same spot um, I just don't have this much ease in in the body as she does so I made it I knit mine with less ease the um, stitch that you do up here is quite interesting. You do it as you knit, so it's as you go. And I talked a little bit about it last time. Um, there was one area, I guess it's right here, where uh, there's errata in the pattern. So if you do wanna make this pattern, make sure you get the errata from the magazine or from, you can get it off of Ravelry. Uh, so the, the errata is the way you do these. Um, these this like stitch this like elongated it's an elongated knit stitch that you end up doing but I think you use yeah you use a crochet hook so yeah it was interesting I found it a little kind I guess tedious is probably the word to to best describe the stitch but it required concentration but it's totally fine. You, you're through that area pretty quickly. It's just in the upper yoke and then a little dab on the sleeve, as you can see here, a little bit of detail on the sleeve. I have a little, I have an end to weave in still that this is, it took days, days to dry on my um, regular blocking mats. It's one of those times where I, it probably would have been beneficial to have a mesh blocking mat <laughs> where you can raise it up and air can circulate on both sides but um yeah so the yarn is uh typically or sorry technically a sport weight and I would say it's pretty true to that it might be like a light dk it is made from 60 percent Coriadale and 30% natural gray alpaca and 10% silk. They no longer make this. This was a show special specific to Edinburgh. They may have 
they may have continued to make it for a short time after that. They may have continued to have it available, but it's not, they don't have it anymore. They have other wonderful yarns though. So if you're, um, if, certainly if you're in the UK, I'm sure you know about them, but if you're not in the UK and they're, you're not familiar with John Arbin, really great resource for beautiful, beautiful yarns, um, really broad color ranges in, in a lot of their lines. And yeah, I, I recommend them. I love them. I have, this is the only yarn I've purchased from them. Everything that I've purchased from them since has been fiber. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so far so good. Um, I do want to say this pattern, which I think you can see here in the, in the image from the magazine, there's a little extra ease in the yoke right around here, which on me is probably fine like when I was blocking it it looked a little strange like there was like some wrinkles in here but I think it smooths out in the wear uh, I have pretty broad shoulders because I do a lot of strength training so I am working out this area of my body um, if you looked at pictures of me from like five years ago before I started strength training I don't I'm not as broad across in this area here so it's it yeah it's just something that like I know about my body and I try to um accommodate when I'm knitting which when we talk about what sweater Martha's wearing <laughs> we're gonna talk about this same issue so yeah let's talk about what Martha's wearing so Martha get in here Martha Martha is Wearing Spots by Anne Vinzel. And it is knit out of, um, the pattern calls for a strand of fingering weight and a strand of mohair being held together. Do I have the bag? Oh, it's up here. So I can show you the yarn. I'm using a strand of sport weight and a strand of mohair instead. You can also knit the pattern with three strands of mohair held together, which I think would make a really interesting, um, like I was thinking about it after, like as I was knitting this, I was thinking that like three strands of mohair, I have so much mohair, but I have a lot of single skeins of mohair and it might be kind of fun to do a scrappy version. Anne Vinzel did a scrappy version of this sweater and it looks great. Um, again, I think she has a lot more ease in hers, but this is on Martha. It's not finished as you can see. I'm working on the sleeves. Um, but it is off the, I did finish the bottom, but it's also not blocked and I'm having the form, the shape of the top. And you can see this if you look on Instagram at some of the images, uh, that Anne herself has posted or other knitters have posted. Um, the armhole decreases are kind of weird. Like they're not really the way my body shaped anyway. They are very straight down and we're not really shaped like that. We're more shaped like this, <laughs> at least I am anyway. I shouldn't speak about you. Maybe you, maybe this would be a design that would work on you. Um, but yeah, I found this a little too angular and straight for me and though I went ahead and did it anyway because it looked like there was some accommodation in the bottom part like in the armhole so section but now that I have it on Martha it's quite snug uh it it's pretty bang on like with no positive ease so this is where I I need to really trust the swatch um, so I picked the gauge based on the swatch and I know you you probably aren't going to be able to see it too well but in the blocking it blocked out much more loose and uh, with more ease so I'm trusting the swatch and this and that I will end up with some positive ease here and that maybe this weird very straight um, armhole won't be so strange once it's blocked um, on my body. Um, the other thing I find strange is that 
there's quite a few decreases in the arm on the along the arm and my norm again because I strength train and I have um, pretty large biceps I don't start any decreases typically until I get pretty far down like so I get about I'll always do like four or five inches in a straight way and then I start adding um, I start doing decreases sometimes I won't even do very many until I hit my the top of my forearm and then I'll just rapidly decrease to the cuff um, in the images that she has and other knitters have made there the sleeve looks quite big but I don't I mean with the number of decreases that the pattern has you do it doesn't seem like it would be that big I mean so far I've done only two decreases I haven't done any others um, and I've knit I'm I think I'm right about here so I'm about halfway through the sleeve and I don't know that I'll do very many more decreases um, yeah and also another indicator that I'm gonna get more positive ease in the blocking is how loose this rib is because once I stopped doing color work this became this just is kind of floppy and I think it'll all block out um, and it won't be so floppy. It's also twisted rib, which in hindsight probably is not the best uh, rib to do with color work. Um, it, it was I was following the pattern. It wasn't my choice. Uh, I like the look of twisted rib, but I yeah I don't I think it kind of isn't the best choice for an all over color work sweater. I do really love the way the hand knit or the hand spun rather. My contrast is this. It's a hand spun made of Corydale and sea cell, which is a plant material. Mostly Corydale though. It's one of my early hand spuns and it's a little ropey. There are some places that I really over twisted it. And uh, yeah, I was planning, I had made a sweater's quantity and I was planning to use it in an all over sweater, but it just is too cardboard like. In this, it's fine. It's really giving the um, squishy, uh, superwash merino sport weight and mohair strand that I'm holding together it's really giving it structure which I like um, these are from Camilla fiber company uh, in the colorway clay dust it was a seasonal color if you're not familiar with Camilla fiber company she does seasonal colors. she has a line but she also does seasonal colors um, I think her autumn colors just got released maybe a week ago or so and they're really pretty she has a lot of soft colors if you like sort of if you like soft colors um yeah i i think that's all i can say about this i did i have talked a lot about the problems the early problems that i had with the with the beginning of the pattern there are some weird things that the pattern reads and i just think it's some translation issues um the designer i believe is danish and yeah i just didn't um sorry i got a little fuzz on my nose that mohair <laughs> um, I just think it didn't translate as well as it could have in uh, from Danish to English and there are some there are some problems but I have it all if you're interested in knowing the problems that I encountered I did detail everything on my project page on Ravelry and if you're not on Ravelry and you want to know um, the issues I can email them to you just um, write me a comment below and I'll I'll reach out to you or you can DM me on Instagram and I'll reach out to you that way. If you prefer something more private, that's fine. Yeah, so that is my uh, spot sweater. Um, I do really like the random blue striping effect that happened with the hand dyed, or hand spun rather. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I'm getting the same effect on the sleeve. Um, I may run out of that skein and then I'll be on a different skein over here that's a little more marled, so that one sleeve might be more stripy than the other, but it's hand spun, so I, I really don't mind that aspect. All right, the other sweater that I made some great progress on, which actually I think I'm going to swap out um, and put on Martha, because um, I also like this one. This is a uh, another this is actually a free pattern. It's called, I want to say it's called Mije or Mije, 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 I'm not really sure. It's a, 
Icelandic maybe designer I'm not sure where the designers from but I'll put the pattern on here you can find it it's free on Ravelry through Ravelry or just Google it and you'll find you'll find it so I'm all I have also cast off the um, bottom of this and I'm working on the sleeves in this pattern um, this has been really nice to knit it's just it's a very uh, not much I'm in the easy breezy stockinette just knit 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 so it's really nice to to uh, work on when I'm watching something that either has subtitles or I feel like I need to pay more attention or if I'm in a meeting or something I can just knit away um, this also has kind of a funky bottom which I think will work out in blocking um, but she has you do a color work hem and uh, you are knitting and purling with two colors and carrying them. So um, this pattern, I, uh, well, let me talk about the yarn first and then I'll talk about the pattern mods. I made a couple mods on the pattern. The yarn is my first time using Rama yarn and I am using the Phenol fingering weight. This is a green heather shade, uh, number 4122. And I'm also using black and white, same yarn. I actually, so there is a cuff detail. You're supposed to use or re-knit this same, very similar pattern on the, on the arm, like just above the cuff. And then you do the stripey end with the stripy cuff. I don't think I'm going to have enough black to do that. I only have about 14 grams left of a 50 gram ball. Um, so I think I'm just probably going to do the black and white across the cuff and not do the color work. I don't think it's going to be missed much. Um, I think, you know, the, the beauty of this sweater is both the yarn and the color work that you're, that you see already. I like how it kind of looks like a spider web. <laughs> I really like it's kind of kind of witchy, but it's also like because it's green, it could also be sort of Christmas-ish or spring. Um, so I like all of those aspects of it. I really had been for the last about a year and a half been thinking about doing a green sweater with some black and white graphic, and this one just resonated with me. Um, I don't have any complaints about the pattern other than the sizing is really sort of weird and off. I am making, um, I, I have a 40 inch bust and I am making the extra large, which, and, and so there's just one more size bigger. So this, it's not size inclusive, but it is a free pattern. And if you're on the larger size and want to knit it, I would suggest just knitting it in a DK or even worsted weight to get a bigger, um, a bigger version of it. Um, it's an older pattern too, so it was probably published before the size inclusivity became something that uh, designers cons consciously pursued. Um, oh, so the mods I made, the mods, I'm making a boxy straight-sided um, sweater, which will probably be about the length of this. I think it's actually will be a little longer. I actually think this is going to grow too when I block it. Um, but I think this is about the same, gonna hit me maybe about a half inch or an inch longer than this one. Um, and I just, I really wanted a boxy shape. And now that I can see the way that this rib bottom is, is sort of standing out like this, <laughs> I think that is the right thing to do. So I end it, I'll end up with a boxy shape. The pattern has waist shaping and it's also meant to be a little longer and um, that this hip area is supposed to be fitted. Um, just think this is more my style this boxy boxy look and it is living in a halloween project bag that i showed last time i had just gotten it in my last um episode it is by the fat squirrel love her love her podcast love her bags they're just so cool and cute and fun 
Okay, my third sweater that is still on the needles is my Christmas shifty. I have been working on it slowly. Um, not, I didn't make much progress. So I'm not really going to show it here. I did talk a lot about it in last episode. Um, and you'll see it again next episode because I anticipate, I'm now knitting four sleeves. <laughs> so on these sweaters, the two, the two on here and the two, uh, on the green sweater. Uh, so I will be making progress on that sweater. My, 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 uh, short term goal is to get these two off the needles and, uh, done. And then I'm going to really, uh, work on that Christmas shifty as well as some other Christmas things that I am knitting or planning, planning. Um, an update on my sock. I showed it last time last episode and I complained about the um, Kitchener stitch I and many of you left lots of comments about this sock and how to fix it so um, where I'm at right now with the finished sock that I had last time was I unpicked the Kitchener stitch and I have it sitting on some very tiny these are smaller needles than the needles that I use to knit the, the sock and I'm going to go back in and try again to uh, do the Kitchener stitch a little tighter. So thank you for that feedback. Um, and I also talked a lot about the yarn and the fact that it's, though it is, um, this is dyed in the wool, there is no nylon. It's a nylon free uh, yarn. So I was concerned about that. I talked about that last time and many of you gave me some advice. And I think what I'm going to do is hold the uh, heel yarn together with some mohair silk to just add some strength because like I said I have a lot of extra mohair silk like some single skeins and also some scrappy bits here and there so I have some scrappy bits that I'm going to do that with my second sock is right here I've made really great progress on it I'm going to actually finish the toe when I'm done um, so I'll finish it today uh, so I'm on the toe of the second one and uh, yeah then I just have to do the heels I'm not quite certain if I'm going to do the heels using the spin cycle dyed in the wool or the um, superwash oh so yeah the yarns this is pattern pattern wise this is sparks by Andrea Mowry and it is um, her 2020 Rhinebeck uh, pattern stitch pattern that uh, there was a spark cardigan I guess it goes this way um, and spark yeah sparky there was there's a, I think there's a hat and uh, she did socks and she did a um, pullover so yeah this is part of that whole package and yeah it's been you know I'm, I'm kind of ready for these to be done. I don't know that I will do a top-down sock any again anytime soon. Um, I don't like it as well. It makes sense for color work, but I don't really like knitting it as well as I like doing uh, Andrea's everyday sock um, where you knit uh, toe up and you do a flegal heel. So it's like you can do it all in one without fussing with a heel flap and all of that so um yeah I don't know I don't know so that is where I'm at with this these will be done very soon I will have them finished to show you next time and uh yeah oh the only other thing I want to say is that I did not this uses very little yarn it seems to me um this is how much I have left of the superwash and technically I should not be using it anymore and I think it's probably more than half a skein. It was a hundred grams this skein and it is now 73 so I yeah so a quarter of a skein so I could have really used a scrappy uh, bit instead of doing a opening a full skein for this sweater or socks sorry and the spin cycle I had only about point I would say about 37 38 grams and I'm gonna have plenty to so this is how much I have left to finish the toe and I think it's probably enough to do one heel and I have an equal amount from this sock for the second heel so um i don't know i may end up just using this with the strand of mohair i'm not really sure um but yeah that was sort of interesting 
I always try really hard to update my project pages with the exact amount of yarn that I used. Um, for my own reference, so if you, you know, want to file that away and maybe think about making these socks later down the road, you can always just go back to my project page and take a look at exactly the yardage that I used. I made, it's only two sizes, this pattern, and I made the smaller size. Um, so, yeah, I, I won't be in a rush to make the, these socks any, again anytime soon just because it, it just, it seemed, it, it's taking me too long. Um, and... I'm yeah I'm not in, I'm not enjoying working on them anymore. We'll see how it goes with the afterthought heel. Uh, staying on whips, I do have a new cast on. Um, this is the oh, oh before I show you this, I have a clip to show you. I wanted to share with you um, some stocking ideas that I have. So I talked about um, last time about my wanting to make stockings for my son and daughter-in-law and that one had a tree and I told you that I've had other designs other than the two stocking patterns that I have available that I just never have put into a pattern. So I'm going to be doing that this, this uh, fall, I hope. Um, this is the tree that I knit uh, for my own family um, for our house. Uh, I knit it, I don't know, like probably seven or eight years ago. Um, and it's based on the same basic stocking pattern. It's just that it has the, uh, the tree design. So I now I'm going to graft this out and oh, there's a little tail that needs to be pushed back in. Um, and it's cute to put a little uh, sparkly pom-pom. That was what I was talking about before. Um, I have another tree too that has a lot more baubles on it. So you could get pretty, pretty creative with the way you decorate this tree. But um, overall, I think it's pretty, pretty nice. So that is, that, that's that. Um, this is the snowman design. There's a little bit of show through in the way I knit it. So I will need to... Uh, that's to just ignore that. That's not um, something that comes up for the knitter, but it is all done by Intarsia. So this is the snowman and same sort of idea of uh, the striping. I don't know why I just like that striping idea on the um, sock. And then this is the bunny rabbit that I talked about. And the reason for the bunny rabbit is that one of my nephews um, has bunnies and has had bunnies since he was about eight years old and he's now in his 20s. So uh, that was why we did the bunny. We did the bunny for him, but it's, it came out really cute. Um, so yeah, these are the three. And then I'm doing a, I'm going to do some sort of polar bear for um, my son. So I will have uh, the bunny, the snowman, which the snowman you could also decorate. I didn't happen to decorate this one, but maybe I will now that I have it out. Um, put some pom-pom buttons or maybe um, some embroidery eyes or something like that. That would be cute. Um, but yeah, I'll do. I'll be doing these three plus a polar bear face. So I'm probably just going to do a face right in the center um, for my son and daughter-in-law. And I look forward to sharing those with you when they get developed more. So yeah, I have, uh, started down, uh, Christmas knitting and, uh, I have cast on and knit a bit on this new stocking. It says it will be flatter when I block it. It says mommy, mommy which is the spelling for saying mom, mommy in Spanish. Um, so this is for my daughter-in-law. And I am using this beautiful uh, dream yarn from Loopy Mango. The pink is very bright. I think you can see it well on screen. This is the colorway Flamingo and this is Spicy Hot Pink. Um, and besides that, I am holding with the bright pink a strand of this metallic yarn which is called Astra Astra Glow metallic and it, I bought a 250 yard cone of it it comes in also really big cones which I don't know how big they are really big <laughs> really big <laughs> so yeah I'm holding a strand I think you can see um, the little bit of sparkle that comes through there uh, I am knitting the tree 
pattern that I showed you on the clip. So I just started it. Um, and this is Intarsia. And I looked at what I did on those older ones. So those stockings that I showed you in the clip, I knit probably about eight years ago. Cause I think it was when we moved into this house and we moved here eight years ago. So, um, yeah, so they, they're quite old. Um, the ones that I showed you in the clip are not for sale yet, but I, my intention is to publish those patterns this year, um, this fall. So probably somewhere along the lines of end of October, early November, those will be out. Um, I have some, I bought some yarn this week uh, that I'm, you know, some really cool novelty yarn that I'm planning to play around with, with some of those designs. So, um, yeah, so stay tuned. I will show you more and talk to you more about it. By the way, if anyone would be interested in testing the pattern, let me know, um, reach out to me either, you know, through social media or through, um, you know, if you have my email, email me. I'll put my email actually in the description box in case anybody wants to email me directly. Um, so yeah, I will uh, probably need a handful of testers, not too many, uh, just to test the pattern. It's uh, the, the base of the pattern is exactly the same as two previously published patterns that I've uh, put out. So I don't anticipate that being a problem, but I think I'm going to add some pointers and tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, you do not have to do na a name across the top and you are quite limited in terms of letters. You can see that this is four letters and they just fit. Uh, you really, if you do this, you need to do nicknames or maybe initials or something like that. Or, you know, this is also, these are all, these are, there are three, four, uh, um, stitch wide letters, which most of the letters on the grid pattern is only, are only three. So in this case, yeah, I could probably could do a five letter name without any trouble across the top. Um, the sweater or the, sorry, the stockings that you saw in the clips, my family, we all have really long names. So we didn't do letters. We did, uh, we do tags and it also lets us be flexible in terms of who's visiting this year. Um, we don't feel the need to have a, a stocking for every single family member. So it kind of is a nice leveler for, um, you know, for flexibility in terms of people coming and going and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, but my son and daughter-in-law wanted names on the, their stockings. So my son will be Pappy. Um, and yeah, so excited. So excited. I'll have more. I'll, this is where, you know, mo the majority of my knitting energy will be over the next uh, couple weeks. So certainly the next month. Um, so yeah, more updates coming. So soft too. This yarn is great. All right. That's all my knitting. Oh, I, spinning. I have a little tiny bit of spinning to show you. Uh, I did finish up the fiber that I was spinning. I showed you last time that I was spinning and I have two beautiful skeins. I think this is roughly uh, 600 yards. I think it's a little less, like five and change or so. And uh, yeah, so pretty. I love it so much. I'm kind of obsessed. I wish I had enough to knit a whole project um, or a whole sweater a project, but I don't. Um, but it would make a nice contrast color. It would certainly work in a sweater like this because this, I think the contrast color is about 600 yards. Um, but yeah, so, so great. I just did a straight up two ply of it and uh, yeah, the yarn, the fiber is from Stitch Together Studio. She hasn't been dyeing fiber lately, but she, you know, occasionally will do some fiber. Um, but Stitch Together Studio, it was a one of a kind, and it was just this beautiful, I'll put a picture on screen of the fiber. It was a beautiful, like, uh, mostly pink, I would say, with pops of orange and green and blue. So you can see there's a little bit of blue coming in, and some beautiful green and purple, just Oh, these are, these are, I just love these. I just love them. Um, the yarn itself is, the fiber itself is uh, targy, 80% targy, 10% silk, and 10% bamboo. I really didn't feel 
the silk or bamboo in here too much. Um, it's It was very well integrated. Every once in a while there'd be a little slub or something of them, but not too much. It, it um, seemed pretty much, you know, put together, like probably commercially prepared and then hand dyed. That would be my guess. But yeah, I am doing a new spinning project, but I haven't even started it. So I'll share that with you next time. Um, the progress on that next time. I have a tiny bit of stash acquisitions and this is going to be my next sock project. <laughs> so I got a mini skein set from Wooly Mammoth. And if you're not familiar with Wooly Mammoth, I did not bring the tag over. Darn it. Oh, it's over there. I see it. Yeah, so she is a Northern Irish dyer. And she does a lot of, uh, she does exclusively natural dyes. She also does some yarn production that are, you know, some pretty special yarn production, all local. Um, she believes in like this natural dye local ethos, which is pretty cool. I like that too. Um, I felt a little guilty about having <laughs> just a teeny bit, not much really, if I'm honest, um, about having these shipped, but you know, it is what it is. I want to knit her beautiful yarn. So I have been like eyeing Emma's yarns forever and I just kept couldn't justify buying, couldn't just, and then finally I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy it. Cause I've been really, really good about per my purchases, my yarn purchases. I've been very disciplined since I went a little crazy with some Advent stuff, some um, future, <laughs> future yarn and fiber coming into this house. So I just decided, forget it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy it. Then it will be this like itch that has been scratched and I won't have to, I won't feel compelled compelled to stock her her shop updates and then go oh no 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 not now not now so yeah so the it, this arrived and I really like it and I think I'm going to do the everyday sock in a fade exactly the way I'm holding them right now um, I'm gonna do the the lighter color as or sorry the purple shade as a as the toe um, ending with the gold shade there. Uh, it is a hundred, there are 20 grams, uh, mini skeins, so it's 120 grams. So, uh, I will have opportunity to make these a little longer if I want. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of go along and maybe every few inches switch, change colors. I just want to be mindful that I'm not using more than half on the first sock. So yeah, this is, I'm excited about. I really want to cake them up and get them cast on, but I'm going to finish the sparks first and then I will do those. Yeah, so that is uh, that is my my only stash acquisitions. I do have a little bit of other news that I want to share with you, and I'm going to put some clips in here as I uh, talk. I went to Knit and Escape um, their virtual conference this weekend, which is why this episode is coming out a little late and why I am pressed for time um, in this week. So it was really, really fun. I, you know, I didn't join any classes because I find that classes, uh, mostly, uh, are targeted to a different type of knitter than I am. Um, it's rare for me to find a class that really where I feel like I'm really going to learn something, but it was it, the excitement around the conference and um, having people, you know, excited about their classes and learning and stuff. It's really cool. Um, if you've never done a knit and escape conference, they are very, there's a lot to do, even if you don't join classes. So there's tons of demos. There was something to do probably all day from 10 a.m. Eastern time till 7 or 8 at night. Um, you could find something that was going on all day, even if you weren't in classes. And uh, this time around, they did a special for Shetland week. So that was really, really cool. Um, listening to some of the people that were, you know, in Shetland and talking about Fair Isle knitting and just the 
culture of Shetland and it's definitely on my bucket list of a place that I would like to go at some point um, and experience Shetland week and see what you know see see it all in person but this was like the next best thing I think um, and there is also some events that virtual events this year that you could attend that I think are this week uh, so yeah there is that so this was a nice way to kind of do it all um, along with another conference. But uh, I did also, Knit and Escape does a really wonderful job of um, ha collecting promo codes and uh, show specials and stuff with the vendors. Because like when you go to an event like Rhinebeck or some of the satellite events that happen around Rhinebeck or other knitting festivals, um, often the knit the yarn vendors or other you know vendors will have some sort of show special something that they're they're they've brought or you know they, it's just like this yarn for example from edinburgh it's something that's specific for that festival so it's either like a special um, item or there's some sort of show special in terms of um, what you can purchase so they do a great job gathering those together and making it feel like making you feel like you know you're getting something that is exclusive to the event so i really liked that too so i did purchase some i did make some purchases <laughs> one of the best i don't know whether i should share them with you now or maybe maybe i'll wait until they come and then i'll show you um but yeah i did so expect some upcoming uh purchases and things that uh coming and I can't wait till they're all here so I can lay it all out and do do like a flat lay of uh, what I ended up buying at the event so it was yeah it was really cool it was fun I, I think I'm getting a, around to the point where I mean when I used to go to knitting festivals I think I really really loved seeing the new yarns and stuff and now I'm getting to the point where I'm very interested in the sheep and the animals so it's 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 interesting how you evolve and along those lines I just purchased and I'm so glad I have this for Rhinebeck the field guide to fleece it is a really cool book that um, the I'm gonna just show you the Shetland page since I was looking at it yesterday while I was sitting in the Shetland stuff um, it's it's a it's really designed for you to carry with you when you go to these events to these yarn festivals and stuff because it's just one page brief and then some information about the fleece that comes with it or that comes from that particular sheep um shetland are pretty interesting in that there's a wide variety and one of the workshops that happened yesterday for shetland for the Shetland um, special was about grading and grade, grading means um, te testing the quality of yarn and how, or sorry, fiber and how broad the grading is in from the Shetland sheep. So you could get anywhere from grade one through five. So that was, that was pretty interesting. And I think that's unusual for sheep. I don't think, I think generally you get the same or more or less like maybe one or two grades not five grades so i quite enjoyed that just to show you again like it's this is like a pretty nice easy quick reference right so it's not comprehensive but it's um the salient points that you would need um if you were you know curious you wanted to know about uh the the wool or about the animal so i'm really glad i purchased that i i do a lot of shopping on Amazon and that's where I got this. Um, so yeah, it, yeah, pretty inexpensive. Um, self care. I just, I think I'm going to do more sharing <laughs> for self care. I like just kind of sharing with you some of my struggles the last couple weeks. Um, my office decided that they want to us all back full time. Um, unless we had a prior work from home agreement. Uh, I did have a prior work from home agreement, thank goodness. I So I will be back in the office four days a week, one day work from home, unless um, events or meetings don't allow me to work from home. Generally speaking, now, especially with the pandemic still on, I'm in my office with my door shut. Um, so I 
appreciate that I can shut my door, but on the other hand, I'm not having those um, important conversations that do help me do my job better. Um, those are still all happening online. Uh, so I, yeah, I really don't understand why we need to be back in the office full time, like especially for a role like mine. I understand being in the classroom and that that's important for students, but I don't understand um, the administrative pieces that I do, why those can't continue to be uh, remote. Because if I'm meeting remotely, why am I in the office? I really don't get it. Um, so I'm not very happy about that. Uh, as I'm sure many others and my company is trying to my university is trying to develop a remote work agreement with the employees so they are working on it and I'll be honest if I do not get a remote working agreement I will be quitting my administrative role there and moving to a company that will allow me to work remotely because I, that's how much I hate it <laughs> So we'll see what happens. I'll give them till the end of the year to come up with some sort of remote work agreement or to just chill on this. You have to be in the office mantra that they're doing right now. So yeah, not happy about that. Um, in addition, I really do not like fall. I know a lot of knitters love fall because they like the weather is cooling down and they can start wearing more knitting. I just don't like it. I find fall very sad. I kind of wish we could jump straight to Christmas um, because at least that's joyful. Um, I know it's a necessary, like rationally, I understand the need for fall that, and I understand the cooler weather is nice, but emotionally it's it's hard I I mean right now the trees are still green um, they are waning though they're starting to get a little frayed around the edges and they will be dropping soon and I'll have some beautiful fall footage for you in my next episode I know because um, that's you know it's gonna happen over the next week or two but generally speaking like I find fall sad I I love summer and I am sad to see the summer months go and the shortened days coming and yeah I can't wait till we're on the other side of winter solstice <laughs> just how I feel um I I know it's contrary to many many knitters who just like fall is their favorite season but yeah I knit all year round so it doesn't uh, I don't get more energized with knitting in the fall I just am gonna continue working on the things that I'm working on so that's probably why I moved up my Christmas knitting to now to help me have something hopeful and something to look forward to. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying fall, even if I'm not. Um, and maybe something I said resonated with you. Uh, I'm looking forward to the MCAL, the Stephen West MCAL. I hope you are too, or maybe, or if you're not, that's fine. No worries, uh, no judgment here. I know it's not for everyone. I know Stephen's uh, designs can be a little out there and it can be really a big bummer. I know it can be a big bummer to work on a, on a MCAL and hate the results because that happened to me more than once. Um, and I think what has happened what I so I've been a little cavalier. I had been a little cavalier about my uh, my color choices, and this time I'm I've I've learned to be very deliberate about my color choices, and I am also uh, making myself uh, ch check myself on the color wheel, which I talked a lot about uh, what I did for this MCAL on my last episode. Also, many of you have said to me that you would appreciate a color workshop and like teach me teaching one that you would love to take one with me. So I do want to tell you that that is in the works and I will share more when I can, when I know more, when I have something concrete right now, it's just kind of pie in the sky, abstract ideas. Um, I am, uh, since I am a university professor and I have taught plenty of art classes, uh, I have an MFA, um, I will, you know, my, I, I feel confident that my color workshop that I teach will be good, <laughs> high quality, and you will go away with things like you will leave the workshop with information that will be really useful. Um, so I, yeah, so I'm designing the curriculum now and I am uh, going to start submitting proposals to 
festivals and um, workshops and things like that may be virtual. My preference is to do them in person. So um, I'm curious to see how many festivals are going to switch to in person. And as those uh, switch, I may start uh, submitting my proposal to, you know, to see if I can get any nibbles or interest. So yeah, that's in the works. So I know that many of you have talked about it. They will be way, my workshop will be way more comprehensive than anything I've shared on this channel. I'll still continue to speak about color uh, in and my color choices as, you know, it seems relevant to the rest of my content. And uh, yeah, I hope that, uh, I hope that's exciting news for you. <laughs> I hope you're uh, curious and interested to see uh, how I, yeah. My next episode ideally will be the weekend of, uh, it will be in two weeks as is my normal schedule, but that weekend I just want to let you know I am going to a wedding and the wedding, is, it's in New York City, but it kind of necessitates me staying overnight somewhere. I'm not positive I'm going to have an episode up in two weeks, so my next episode might be a Rhinebeck special episode. Um, so I will make an episode of Rhinebeck weekend, um, so that may be the next uh, episode that will come out. I'm going to try to get something up um, the weekend of before Rhinebeck, just do an, an update video like this one, and then I can do a Rhinebeck episode that would be ideal. Not sure it's going to work out that way. We'll see. But I hope you have a uh, wonderful next couple weeks. I hope you're um, staying safe and healthy and uh, that you're able to work remotely if you choose to work remotely. And yeah, all of the good things, all happy thoughts and good vibes heading your way. Bye.